I just write this part of the blackboard here. I can wipe this off now because these are exactly the same as they were before. So I'll have this first one becomes B prime gamma naught plus gamma prime 1 equal to 0. I want to pick up the first, uh, the, the, the restrictions corresponding to the first row of B. So I just put the first row uh, in here and calculate the first row of everything in this equation. So I get B prime gamma naught and gamma 1 prime. This is the first row of that. I'll do the same thing for all of them. I get, for the second one, it's very obvious now, becomes B prime pi 1 plus, let me just write it as C prime pi naught plus pi 1 equal to 0. And finally, I get the last one, B prime pi 2. That becomes gamma prime 2 plus uh, C prime pi 2. Now, I have got also this set of restrictions. So I complement the restriction implicit in the reduced form and structural parameters with a set of restrictions uh, which I have imposed as a homogeneous set of restrictions to identify. These are all identifying restrictions. These are restrictions implicit in structure model. So I can then have a system of equations which I can write as, uh, in the case of the, the row or column vector, uh, you can transpose them. But let me just write it in the way I was I've got in terms of the rows. So I have got B prime, gamma prime 1, gamma prime 2, C prime. Remember, that is the A prime, which I'm interested. OK? Multiply by, now I can write down the various terms. I'm going to start with this last one. Just. Uh, I can reshuffle this number of equations. I can put them any order I want. So I'm starting with the last one. To get the last one, I need the first column of this to be exactly matching up by these. So I write as gamma 1, phi gamma 2, and phi c. That will give me, if I then put the whole thing equal to 0, give me this one. In order to get uh, the, the second one, I will go back to the first equation now. I should have put this on the top. Then I get pi naught i of order k1. Because remember, I have split the gamma into two parts, the k1 and k2 element. And I have zeros elsewhere. Now I go to the third equation. Or oh no, I'm going to the, this third one, yes. And that I have got the v prime becomes pi 2, that becomes 0 because there is no gamma 1. The gamma 2 becomes i k 2. And finally, the, the, pi, the c would be equal to pi 2. Finally, I go to this remaining equation. That gives me pi 1, gives me 0, 0. And for c, I get pi naught plus pi 1. So I have actually, what I have done is all this, which is very similar to the problem of a structural equation estimation, is all that equal to 0. Now, the question is, how, under what condition I can solve this up to a scalar constant? Obviously, the 0 is a solution of that, but I'm not interested in that. I want to have a non-zero or a non-trivial uh, solution for this, up to a scalar, which I can read up to a scalar constant. If this is not of full rank, if this matrix is of rank less than is order. Now, what is the order of this matrix? Well, this is the same as 2g plus k by 2g plus k. So that is 2g plus k by 2g plus k. And uh, I want, is it? No. 
Have I made a mistake? No, that is J and J, that's okay. And uh, what I want to do is to have the uh, rank of this is e to be equal to the number of uh, uh, parameters which I'm going to estimate. So the, 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 this, again, is very similar to that. I have to have this rank, shall I call this, I don't know what, let's call it this Q matrix. Let's call that a Q. The condition for uh, which is necessary and sufficient is that the rank of Q should be equal to 2J plus K minus 1. If the rank of it is less than its order, uh, it essentially cannot be inverted. And therefore, I can always find the uh, uh, parameters A's, B's, gamma's, and C's up to a scalar constant. What is, can we, the issue is, can we simplify this rank condition further? Now, whether we can simplify it further, it's clear that firstly, we can obviously the dimension of that Q matrix. It's not necessarily a Q matrix, is it? It yes. defines the dimension of the fine. Oh, yes, uh, you're right. Uh, it's the, well, that's the order condition. You are quite right. But I just, it's, it's not, right. yes, I didn't uh, say much about that. I'm sorry about that. This is R, I said, didn't I? So really, the matrix Q is 2G plus K. I made a mistake here. It's 2G plus K by R by R plus K plus K1. You are quite correct. That is the order of this matrix. It's not 2G plus K by 2G plus K. Now, obviously, if uh, this is 2G plus K, uh, we know that the rank of a matrix is the minimum of the number of its columns or its rows. Now, there are two, two situations arises clearly here. And uh, we are going interested in the situation in which uh, we have that uh, uh, the since this is of rank 2G plus K minus 1, that's the condition, then obviously we need to have that uh, R plus K1 should be larger than or equal to 2G minus 1. Because I can add the two side K, if you like. I need for this to have rank 2G plus k minus 1, and then enable me to identify the parameters, I need the 2g plus k minus 1 to be less than the number of its columns. If it was not, then the rank should be r plus k plus k1, and that uh, would always be larger than the number of unknown parameters that won't do. OK? That's the usual uh, solution of homogeneous equation. And therefore, I really need this condition to be satisfied if I cross out the k, that r plus k1 has to be larger than 2g minus 1 as well. This is the order condition. Uh, I'm, uh, when I write in the rank condition, essentially, if this rank condition will be satisfied, for it to be satisfied, it's necessary that this order condition to be satisfied. Let me, before simplifying this, let me say now we have talked about the order condition. Let me just uh, say something more about it and uh, give you a feeling about utilizing these sort of conditions in practice. Now, to do that, if we denote the number of endogenous and uh, exogenous variables which are excluded from this equation by G bar, K bar and H bar, then it is possible to uh, write uh, the equation also as K 
plus k1 is not difficult to see actually is equal to g bar plus d uh, sorry is h bar if there are the number of endogenous variables that are included sorry not excluded it's always i get it always confused whether it's you're talking of exclusion or ex these are included g endogenous variables are included g bar these are h bar the expectation of variables are included and k bar are the number of uh, x's included whether they are predictable or non predictable perfectly okay you can rewrite this like that the reason is that the number of restrictions has to be always equal to uh, the number of excluded variables this is the number of the restrictions uh, and if now replace this back in here uh, and uh, cancel out the g's or two g's and so on this will be the run condition sorry the order condition so the order condition says very simply that the number of expanded variables whether predicted uh, or predetermined variables whether predictable or not plus this is the key one the number of variables which could not be perfectly predictable they are truly exogenous they are not predetermined that should always be uh, larger or equal to the number of included variables in the equation minus one that's very easy to apply you count how many variables are in the equation you take one out of it and then it this has to be a smaller or equal to the number of predetermined variables plus the number of truly exogenous variables by that i mean those variables which cannot be predicted exactly at time t minus one so you'll see how misleading it would be if you didn't classify the variables into two parts you ex you would exaggerate the identification possibilities of identification now i'm not going to go into the little algebra involved in showing you how this rank condition can be simplified further really is a matter of uh, convenience which one do you think one should use uh, i'm especially sensitive to this also because i made a mistake in uh, simplifying in my paper in journal of econometrics and uh, so i'm just writing the answer the correct answer i just made a mistake of how to calculate the rank of a matrix now you can simplify this by showing that this condition is exactly equal to the rank of this matrix being equal to 2g minus 1 and that was pointed out uh, by Wegg and Feldman uh, in our note to the editor published in Journal of Econometrics 1983 I'll give you the list of references typed out next time hopefully I C minus gamma naught two by gamma two zero gamma naught one all of that is equal to two G minus one. This is in fact you can show that that is uh, the ra necessary and sufficient condition for identification let me just point remind some of you if if c was zero c was zero and we were dealing with uh, obviously you can't it's no point putting c equals zero here but i'm saying if c were to be zero that was the model where no rational expectation variable in it and we had the same identifying restriction I want to remind you that the rank condition then would have been fi is equal to g minus 1. This is a textbook result. In fact, if you can think of it, this generalizes this condition. But the reason that is not, you can't put just c and get back to here is simply because the identification very much depends whether which x's were perfectly identified, predictable, or which x's weren't. While when you're dealing with a uh, non-rational expectation model situation, 
you don't need to make any distinction between whether X's are perfectly identify predictable or not. Okay, let me just go through example uh, before just uh, commenting on what happens when X star T could not be estimated. Uh, let me just take the example from uh, Taylor, 1979, Econometrica. I'm changing his notation so it doesn't clashes with ours. Uh, QT is the log of total expenditure as deviation from a uh, trend. MT is a log of uh, money supply. PT is the log of prices. And pi star T is the expected rate of inflation form at time t minus 1 plus ut. This is a very simplified version of his model. And the second equation is that mu is equal to pi t minus 1 plus gamma naught qt star, where pi t is defined to be the difference in the log of prices. Now, it's easy to see that you can rewrite the whole of this as, uh, in our notation as a system of equations, which is qt pi t plus minus b naught zero mt plus minus lambda beta one zero zero minus one plus mu minus mu qt minus one pt minus 1, pt minus 2, sorry about that, it becomes, I have to go back down here, 0 minus beta 1 minus gamma naught 0, qt star, pt star plus, sorry, I want to have ut1 here and a ut2 here, ut1. Now, the reason I chose this example is to show you the importance of splitting the predetermined variables into the truly exogenous one and those which we are not, which are perfectly predictable. I also dropped out the constant term, so you'll see that the problem arises even if you take deviation from the uh, mean of all the variables. Now, in our notation, this is B. This is vector Y. That's B. That's Y. That is gamma naught 1, and mt is x t1. There's only one element there. That is gamma naught 2, and that is x t2, this vector. That is c, and that is u. And, therefore, and obviously that is y t star. So it exactly fits with the framework I have been just looking at. Furthermore, K1 is equal to 1. Sorry, G is equal to 2. K1 is equal to 1. K2 is equal to 3. 1, 2, 3, the predetermined variables. And that's it. Now, in order to see whether the first equation is identified, first we can apply the order condition. What is k? k is 4, 1 plus 3. k1 is 1. And that has to be larger or equal to the number of included variables. You just count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, and uh, is it true? That's it. No, no, no. I don't mean here. Sorry. I did the wrong way. The number of included variables are not in the original. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Sorry, I, that, that was correct. One, two, three, four, five. Minus one. So they are, it is uh, satisfied. In fact, it's all identified according to the rank condition. You can do the same thing here. What am I doing? I'm making a mistake because then I did it. The mistake is here is this, that in fact, pi t star, I have to put it in terms of pt, 
and that is equal to pt star minus pt minus 1 plus ut1 and now we have got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I was right when I did it at my leisure. Uh, it's very, you have to be very careful when you are looking at these models because any transformation of variables has to be looked for, uh, taken account of before you write down the equation in this. Because the equation I've written in terms of PT star. I mean, it's no point, right, if you have got a, a real balance effect and rate of inflation, you have to make sure that there is only one price variable which is not known. There are not, not two unknowns, no, it's not PT and pi T star. Okay? So in this, this condition is satisfied. For the second one, uh, here uh, there is, uh, in fact, because pi t minus 1 is depends on pt, pt minus 1, and that depends on pt minus 1, pt minus 2, so the number of variables are 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, and again, uh, since this part hasn't changed, again that is satisfied. So you can see this model is identified. Uh, the more predetermined variables you put in, the less likely it is that it will become identified. Why? Because the more you put in the predetermined variables, if K1 doesn't increase, only K increases, right? But this side always going up because you keep putting uh, more variables in. So the more number of predetermined variables you put in, in the model, the less likely it is that the, the model would be identified. The reason is, go back to the general principle. If agents can predict something perfectly, you cannot identify. That's basically. The more they can predict perfectly, the less is likely that they can get back to it and identify it. I, uh, let me just say very briefly uh, about what happens if XT star is not known. Since the results are very much the same as what we had before, I probably can do it in two or three minutes. Uh, if X star T1 is not known, which is always the case, or very rarely that we know it, we have to uh, replace it by its conditional expectation, and we need to assume that X T1 has got some process generating it. And the model which uh, I'm going to assume is the general order vector autoregressive, again of order Q, plus some vector now, epsilon T. Note here uh, that I have not made XT1 being a vector autoregressive of XT1. I've made it being a vector autoregressive on all the Xs. It is not a just mistake and, uh, you know, just writing, uh, writing something or missing something on the blackboard. The important thing is to note that it allows for all the lagged values of the dependent or endogenous variables or other variables to affect the generation of XT1. It also allows seasonal damage and constant sense to be included in this equation. So it's very general, since we allow lagged values to, inc to be included in XT. If we have that, what we have to do, what we, then we could estimate xt star as being the sum of ri, xt minus i, i from 1 to q. If I make the assumption of all these x's are exogenous or, uh, or condition or, or orthogonal to epsilon t, I can estimate this and then consider replacing in my previous conditions, instead of the actual value, the expected value. Now, so long as this expected value or uh, calculated value is not perfectly correlated with the, all the variables in the model, like xt1 and xt2, then the model is identified. Now you may ask my, yourself, what about that order condition or how about the order of the lags being satisfied? Where that happens here? It's quite clear. If I had X T minus I is appearing in large in the original model of order M. Q has to be larger than M for this to be non-correlated with the rest of the variables. So again, I get the order condition on the lags as well here. 
which requires that Q should be strictly larger than M. M, I just write it very quickly, M would be the order of this equation, which we would have now uh, sum of gamma i, x minus i, i from 0 to m, plus c, y t star, is equal to u t. So I need, if now I generalize my model to actually allow explicitly for the order of the lag, although I could have done it through xt2, incidentally, because they are all same variables. And if I allow explicitly, if the order of the lag, the, uh, the highest order of the lag in it is m, which I've allowed for, clearly, in the reduced form, this will become collinear with the rest of the variables, and I cannot identify it, unless q is strictly larger than m. Again, that's the order condition, which has to be satisfied. 